Common in both games and software, modal windows are one of the most versatile and useful pieces of UI you'll ever need to design. I don't know why, but they are everywhere. Showing a tutorial dialogue to the player, modal window. Prompting them about an event, modal window. Trying to save them from themselves, you guessed it, modal window. A modal window is the one thing that I've needed to implement to every single project I've worked on. So knowing how to make a good one that's flexible and potentially reusable will save you a lot of time. Hi there, I'm Matt and welcome to Game Dev Guide. In this video, we're going to explore how to create and populate a dynamic modal window in Unity. We're going to look at how we can design the modal window in Unity's UI system. We're then going to build out a modal window controller, complete with an event system we can call to show and display our window. And we're also going to explore how we can dynamically swap the layout of our window based on the information we pass into it. So let's go ahead and get started. I have a little demo scene here with a few objects, a couple of characters, and a little menu button. I want to add a window to tutorialize some content to the player when the game first starts. As this is an adventure game, I also want to show a window when the player clicks on an object and display a comment from our main character here. And then finally, I want to display a window when the player clicks this button over here to confirm that they'd like to return to the menu. So the plan is to design a modal window for all three of these use cases. We'll need something that changes how it looks depending on what we want to display to the user. Thankfully, Unity's UI system is really good at doing this thanks to its layout tools. The first thing we want to do is create a new panel for our modal window. This will allow us to block raycasts outside of the window when the window is active and do the whole modal thing. Fun fact, a window that you can move around and ignore is called a modeless window. The more you know. Right, so let's get into laying out our panel. We're going to be relying on a combination of content size fitter components and vertical or horizontal layout components to resize our window depending on what's enabled. I've covered Unity's layout system in a number of different videos here on the channel, and the content size fitter is a key part of the tooltips video, so I'm not going to go into too much detail here. If you want to learn more about designing UI and laying out elements, there's a UI playlist with all the information you'll need. It's linked in the description below as well as on the channel homepage. I'm going to break my window up into three parts, a header, content, and footer area. The header we'll use for, well, a header, and the footer we'll use for our buttons. The content will be the main thing that determines the size of our window. I want a couple of different layout options for our window, so I'm actually going to create a vertical and horizontal layout area here. We're going to add a content size fitter to our main box and set both elements to preferred size. This will shrink everything down to zero as we need to add and define content layouts for the window to use. Once we add a couple of things into each of our areas and some content, our window should start to form up a bit. We can use a content size fitter on our text, combined with a layout group and content size fitter on its parent to dynamically set its size. So let's just go through and add the rest of our elements here. Our header and footer are looking pretty good. Now it's time to give the same treatment to our content areas. I really like the idea of having a way to show an image to the player that's clear and visible alongside a caption containing the concept of the image. These kind of modals are great for tutorialization content, so let's go ahead and set up our vertical layout to support this. We'll add our image and text and then set up the layout group. The image takes center stage here, so it's worth playing around with a size that you think works. I've gone with a preferred size of around 768 pixels for the image, and then define the text based on this to about 700, as I want a bit of a gap between the text and the edge of the image. I think it looks pretty nice, and it's perfect for showing a video or image of some content to the player with a bit of an explanation underneath. As you can see, even with this first layout, we can toggle different areas on and off and get a variety of different styles of modal window. It's already pretty dynamic as it is. However, I'd still like another layout for a more informal message or something like an item pickup. So let's lay that out quickly. This one is pretty straightforward. Size controls on our parent layout group, and then an icon area with a layout element, and some text with our size fitter and preferred width here set to about 450. So those are our modal components set up and laid out. Now it's time to get it working. Let's create a new script for our modal window panel. In here, we'll create references to all of our areas and then link them up in the editor. Let's also add three actions for each of our buttons. These are going to act as a dynamic callback that we can pass into our methods. And when the corresponding button is pressed, one of these actions will be invoked. 
We'll create a public method for each of the buttons and then invoke their event when called. Then we'll just link these methods up to each button in the inspector. And so our buttons have no specific state. They won't do anything unless a callback is assigned. We're going to have multiple functions in here that other methods can call to determine how and what is shown to the user. So we'll start with our tutorial variant, the hero box. We'll create a method that takes a title, an image, a message, and our three actions. We'll then hide our horizontal content and show our vertical layout. We'll also check to see if our title is empty. And if it is, just hide the header. We'll assign our image and content text and then our callback buttons. Seeing as this is a simple hero box, we don't really need more than one button that often. So we'll check to see if our additional callbacks are null. And if they are, we'll just hide their buttons. Before going any further, let's check to make sure this all works. We'll create a UI singleton we can call and reference for our modal panel. And set that up in the inspector. And then we'll create a new script to trigger our modal window box when the game starts. For now, we'll just pass a title, image, and message here. Okay, so that seems to be working pretty nicely. But let's suppose I want to add another message after this first one displays. Let's extend this to allow us to pass through an action and change some events. We'll add three Unity events for each outcome, and then in our method, we'll create some callbacks to pass into our show as hero method and only show the button if we've assigned an event in the inspector. We'll make a new game object for our second tutorial prompt, but this time we'll tell the cancel button to go back and show the first screen so the user can swap back and forth between them. And this is good. The only issue is that our button should really say continue and back here rather than confirm or decline. So let's extend our modal window to allow us to pass in custom text for these buttons. This is getting a little verbose, so we can actually create a couple of variants of this method to make it easier and assume some default settings. And this is much better. We now have control over the text and we can go back and forth between these two states. Already this window is pretty powerful. All we really need to do now is rinse and repeat for the other two variations. I've extended the point of interest controls in my player controller to check if the interaction button is pressed and if it is, to fire the prompt component. This is extremely similar to our other trigger, but fires the prompt variant instead. Finally, let's do the same with our menu button and make an imageless variant of our modal window. We can create a dialog command that uses our horizontal variant but hides the image. We'll connect the button over here to our UI and link it to the method in our controller that handles the confirmation prompts and button press events. And there we have it, three different modal window variations from a single controller. This should cover the main use cases of a modal window, but as usual, there's obviously a lot more you can do to extend it for your own project. This version is a very basic design, but you could go all the way with it and design something super stylized for your own project and have it extend even further with additional functionality. This really is just a starting point. If you'd like some more tips on UI design and style, allow me to take a minute to introduce to you this video sponsor, Skillshare. As you probably know by now, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators where you can explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. If you're looking to extend your knowledge about UI design or improve your graphic design skills in general, there are a number of incredibly useful design classes to help you do just that. And because it's a platform specifically curated for learning, there are no ads and they are always adding new premium classes so you can stay focused and go wherever your creativity takes you. If you're interested in Skillshare and you want to help support the channel, the first thousand of you to click the link in the description below will get access to a one month free trial of Skillshare's premium membership, allowing you to explore your creativity and check out some of these classes for yourself. And that's all for today. Be sure to let me know your thoughts about modal windows down below. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel, please do consider subscribing as you'll be able to know when new videos go live. If you're interested in more videos from me, why not check out the one on screen now?
As always, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you again next time.